Hi, this is Deepak. How are you? Sorry, I haven't been here on a daily basis because I've been traveling and I'm still traveling. I happen to be in New York today and uh, I'm waiting for all of you to get on. So there you are. We have first person there and uh, I am here uh, in New York with uh, my brother Sanjeev Chopra, Dr. Sanjeev Chopra who um, is a professor at Harvard Medical School, a professor of medicine, gastroenterologist, world expert in liver disease, and also with his co-author, Gina Wild. And uh, they have this book, which I don't know if you can see it properly, and if you can stand on your head, you'll be able to read it also, because the title is upside down. So here we go. Uh, no, it doesn't matter. The book says the two most important is how to find your purpose and live a happier, healthier life. What happens and, if you look uh, like this? No, it's uh, mere no. reflection. I think this is a test for everyone. Yeah, so, yeah, you know, good. You can yeah. do <laughs> somersaults. Somersaults. By the way, have you noticed that you know when you stand on your head and look into a mirror, it doesn't show you straight up? Which it should, right? Yeah. Because sideways, it doesn't make a difference. But upside down is crazy. Anyway, I'm only waiting for people to get on. So we have about 400 people yeah. already, Wonderful. which is great. And um, once again, the book is the two most important days: how to find your purpose and live a happier, healthier life. Sanjeev Chopra, M.D and Gina Wild, his co-author. So first of all, Sanjeev, um, uh, tell me about your collaboration. So I had the privilege of being the faculty dean for continuing medical education at Harvard Medical School, mm -hmm. and Gina is the associate dean for external communications and chief communication officer mm -hmm. at uh, Harvard Medical School. Mm -hmm. So we had the opportunity to do a lot of work together, many committees and conferences mm -hmm. and so on. And then uh, she's also become a family friend. So she, her son, Amitha, my wife, mm -hmm. uh, actually Gina and Gareth, her son, learned meditation from Amitha. Very good. Gina, how was the experience of writing this book? Oh, it was such an honor to write this with Sanjeev. We worked together at the medical school on some very sensitive issues and found through the process that we were kindred spirits and had many of the same underpinnings of values and had an, an interest in happiness and how to live a life of purpose and wanting to give back to the world by helping other people find their own purpose. That's so beautiful. So behind me, if you see somebody filming, that's Crystal. She just flew in from Paris to basically record the day um, because I'm going to Europe. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. So Sanjeev, um, what was the purpose of writing a book on finding purpose? So <clears throat> I had the honor of giving a named lecture at Harvard Medical School, the Nathan Seidel Annual Lecture in Medicine or Humanities. And I chose to give a talk called Dharma, Happiness and Living with Purpose. So I've done a lot of research, reflected a lot on it, and then with discussions with Gina, with Amita, many of her friends, said this is a timely subject. There is so much stress and unhappiness in the world mm -hmm. that although happiness can be linked to a number of things, such as friends, forgiveness, doing things for others, and expressing gratitude, mm -hmm. I call it the three Fs, energy, friends, forgiveness, for others, and gratitude, the key to sustained happiness mm -hmm. is finding your purpose and living it. Mm -hmm. And we talk in this book, we tell a number of uh, amazing inspirational stories of people who found their purpose. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the Buddha once said, every life has a measure of sorrow. Sometimes it is this that awakens us. And it's often when you watch something that's very jolting, stark and negative, mm -hmm. that it lights that spark and you say, you know what, this is unacceptable. I'm going to try and make a difference. There are more than 200,000 books out there with the word happiness in the title. Mm. So we purposely chose 
this title, The Two Most Important Days. It's a quote from Mark Twain, who once famously said, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. That's beautiful. So, Gina, um, tell me, what's your take on happiness after having written this book with Sanjeev? Yeah, so <clears throat> the book really is a way to engage people, and we made it fun. So in the book, there is scientific evidence, the latest evidence on happiness, living a life of purpose, and there's also ancient wisdom. We quote Rumi, the Buddha, and there are worksheets, and the best part for me is there's poetry in the book to inspire. So we're really hoping that people will use it to have fun, find their purpose, and the purpose can be grand, or it can actually be, it can be local, it can be something that enriches your own personal soul, and so we are open to that. There's a worksheet in the back of the book where we list, and we did this with Amita one really fun Sunday. We lit, made a list of our movies that make us happy, TED Talks that make us happy, and we invite and songs and books, and we invite the reader to add to our list and to really engage. And just thinking about those things will boost your happiness level. So when, when Gina said we have many people's purposes in there, by the way, yours is in there too, Deepak. Is there? Yeah, yes. without your name. But okay. most people, when they mm -hmm. see it, can recognize it's probably Deepak. I see. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're often very bold and audacious, like your purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also, we ha I, Amita and I have a friend, Susie Klein, lovely couple, live in Lexington. And she said, my purpose in life is to be the best mother and grandmother for my children and grandchildren and to tend my garden. It's a wonderful purpose. Beautiful, yeah. So if, before we continue, just uh, once again, the book is called The Two Most Important Days, How to Find Your Purpose, Live a Happier, Healthier Life. It's available in bookstores, online stores, so you can check it out on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, online, any other bookstore. Kindle, uh, audio Kindle version. Kindle, audio version. And uh, I'll just read to you some of the uh, chapter titles. What does it mean to live with purpose? Who is happy? The scientific underpinnings, living with purpose, living with love, gratitude is, as an anchor, daily practices for a more purposeful you, seven steps to a happier you, our life purpose and the epilogue. So I'm seeing a lot of amazing comments from all of you, uh, from all over the world, and thank you. And if you are enjoying this conversation, keep pressing the like button, share it with the other friends, and uh, most importantly, get the book. And also right now, since you're here, yeah, Patricia says the book sounds very exciting and I'm going to get it. Um, and all these wonderful messages from Texas, Newfoundland, and somebody says, Gina Wild looks wild. Okay. Uh, that's a good comment. I'll take that as a compliment. Okay. Yes. And, uh, so Deepak, I, I want to mention, Gina mentioned, uh, you know, ancient philosophers and wisdom, but I think the modern day philosophers are children. And we have a bunch of quotes from children. One of our favorite is John Lennon, when he's five years of age, goes to That's school, right. and the teacher gives the kid an kids an assignment, write down what you want to be when you grow up. And he writes, happy, and he hands it to the teacher. And the teacher says, John, you did not understand the assignment. And he looks at the teacher and he says, and you don't understand life. life. Yeah. Yeah. That's a famous right? His wonderful. mother had told him every night when she put him to bed, John, when you grow up, I want you to be happy. And we have exercises in the book specifically for children. And when my children were young, under five, we would have... Taff, who said you were wild, says it, he said it as a compliment. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. But we would each, every night after a bedtime story, I would say, what made you happy today? Which is another way of saying, what are you grateful for? And it was the idea behind that was to get them working their gratitude muscle very young so that they began framing the world by looking at what's positive and optimistic in it. So actually we just published a study from our Chopra Foundation, Chopra Center through Columbia University here where we had people keep a gratitude journal and all the inflammatory markers, cytokines went down. These were patients with uh, chronic heart failure, congestive heart failure and their 
condition improved more than with any yeah. pharmaceutical. Who market. would have thought yeah. that just doing that would help? So, um, uh, by the way, you should send um, your purpose here right now. Can you post your purpose? And um, you have a website on the book, Gina? We do. do. You What's the website? Two. So, uh, right. what's the website? Two, the number two, mostimportantdays.com. And we invite you on the website to share your purpose with us, to share a favorite poem. And we have interviews and discussions. We've been conducting a lot of podcasts, and we include those whenever we can on the website. So, we, we, it's, it's interactive, and we try to keep it vibrant. Okay, so participate. That's the only way. You know, we can enlarge this, expand this conversation. If you go to the website that uh, Gina mentioned, can you mention it again, Gina? The website is two number two mostimportantdays.com. So check it out and mm -hmm. participate, expand the conversation uh, by sharing our purpose with each other. Uh, we get new ideas and expand our purpose as well. So Deepak, uh, in the book we have 10 points, Gina, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. one of them is by you. So Gina, do you mind reading it? Yes. You can find it. Yes. By me. That'd be terrific, yes. yeah. But I hope I haven't changed my purpose since then. <laughs> no, this is the poem. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, Ode to Solomon. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's a beautiful poem, yes. Amazing rendition. Yeah. So yeah, that was a rough translation. Yeah, yeah, that I stage. did by putting together... Um, oh, do you want to read it? Does Either of you? Yep, read it. Gina. Yeah. Ode to Solomon, translation by Deepak Chopra. My heart was split, and a flower appeared, and grace sprang up, and it bore fruit for my God. You split me, tore my heart open, filled me with love. You poured your spirit into me. I knew you as I know myself. Speaking waters touched me from your fountains, the source of life. I swallowed them and was drunk with the water that never dies, and my drunkenness was insight, intimacy with the spirit. And you have made all things new. You have showed me all things shining. You have granted me perfect ease. I have become like paradise. A garden whose fruit is joy, and you are the sun upon me. My eyes are radiant with your spirit. My nostrils fill with your fragrance. My ears delight in your music, and my face is covered with your dew. Blessed are the men and women who are planted in your earth, in your garden who grow as your trees and flowers grow, who transform their darkness into light. Their roots plunge into darkness, their faces turn toward light, and all those who love you are beautiful. They overflow with your presence so that they can do nothing but good. There is infinite space in your garden. All men, all women welcome here. All they need do is enter. We love that translation, yeah, and okay. we didn't actually realize, Deepak, that it was yours until we started researching it. Well, so I just put together many words into this one. This is the famous Solomon that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you grew up, and I and Sanjeev were growing up, we were all familiar with Solomon and Sheba. So Sheba spent one night with Solomon, and that became history. But this is Solomon from the Old Testament, um, the father of... Um, father of um, What's his name? The great prophet as well. So um, that's beautiful. I hope you're inspired and you will share your insights. What makes you happy? What is your purpose? Um, uh, so Sanjeev, what is your purpose? Well, my purpose in life is to fulfill my dharma, which uh, is a Sanskrit word and encapsulates duty, vocation, moral compass, authenticity, and truth. So to fulfill my dharma, to teach medicine, to teach leadership, to teach about happiness and living with purpose, to do it grounded in humility, and with an ardent desire to learn every single day, to celebrate with gratitude my family, my friends, my colleagues, my students, my patients, who inspire me in countless ways, 
and in some small measure inspire everyone that I encounter on this amazing journey in life. That's beautiful. And Regina, what's your purpose? Well, I thought about my purpose and I wondered how was I going to be able to summarize it. And when we were working on this chapter of the book, I sat on my porch and I wrote it and have not changed a word. And it's short, so I'll read it to you. But it's really about paying attention and being attentive to the world in which we live. To pay attention to this precious world in which we live for such a brief time. To use the light that is our life to radiate kindness to learn and to use that knowledge to illuminate the darkness, to appreciate, to forgive, and to be grateful. And in the book, we have a section on resilience and we have sections on forgiveness. And that is a fundamental aspect of being able to move and live in the world by understanding people do their best and how you can change yourself to understand and grapple and, and bring those people who've hurt you into your life. That's beautiful too. You know, Gandhi G once said, uh, "Forgiveness is not for the weak; it is an attribute of the strong." It takes a lot of courage to forgive, mm -hmm. and you have to start by forgiving yourself. I've always thought you forgive not because the other person deserves forgiveness; sometimes they don't, but you forgive because you deserve peace. So, before we end, let me share with you some of the very interesting ideas that are circulating right now in uh, both evolutionary biology and cosmology. Our standard thinking of uh, cosmology is uh, that the universe is random, that uh, uh, basically um, even though the universe is fine-tuned for mind and life uh, for planet Earth, uh, we just hit the jackpot. Uh, the, according to the latest cosmologists, there are two trillion galaxies. Two trillion galaxies. There are 700 sextillion stars. I don't even know how to write that, although my grandson does. And um, there are uncountable billions of planets, 40 billion probably habitable planets in our own galaxy. That's the latest count according to astrobiology. Is this an accident or is the universe purpose driven? That's a big conversation right now in astrobiology. The second thing is about uh, biological evolution. You know, our standard explanation of biological evolution is random mutations and natural selection. And it works. You can do um, game theory and computer programs and you can see that uh, those mutations that are random but frequent naturally select themselves out for propagation. But I've been thinking a lot about this and maybe the word random is, should be replaced by the word unpredictable, unpredictable to us because even those mutations are seemingly happening randomly but they'll end up with us having this conversation and you know these trillions of ga galaxies, sextillion, 700 sextillion stars, trillions of uncountable planets, all fine-tuned, how could that be so that we could have this conversation? And then we as human beings sitting here, able to grasp this, this almost incomprehensible thing that, you know, there are more stars in the night sky than all the grains of sand in all the beaches and all the deserts of the world. And here we are in this grain of sand in an infinite void talking about purpose and is the universe purpose driven? Is biological evolution purpose driven? Um, finding our purpose is part of the whole story. But the story is so incomprehensible, so bewildering, so astonishing. I think the only response is astonishment, humility, reverence for existence, and reverence for life. Before, so Gina, another Gina says, it is ordered. <laughs> okay, yeah. so here we are. Uh, before we end, because we are almost uh, over our time, um, Sanjeev, last thoughts, and Gina, last thoughts. And once again, the book is The Two Most Important Days, How to Find Your Purpose, Live a Happier, Healthier Life. We'll mention the website where you can participate 
and uh, continue this conversation. So, so my last comment, Deepak, as you mentioned, reverence for life. Albert Schweitzer, Nobel laureate, theologian, humanitarian, used to always think that reverence for truth trumped everything. And he's a prisoner of war, he's in a train, he's crossing a river, and there are hippopotami frolicking in the river, including a baby hippopotamus. And it suddenly hits him. It's not reverence for truth. It's reverence for life that trumps everything. I agree. And we have to have the same reverence. If I give you a newborn baby to hold, you cannot but want to protect it. We have to have that same kind of reverence for a leper, for a skidrow derelict alcoholic. Reverence for right? existence. Yes. Reverence for the life that they have and the beauty that they have. Existence, life, awareness, spirit, joy, they're all the same thing. Gina? Yes, and I, I would completely agree with that. And I think we live in challenging times. And remembering what Sanjeev said is very important. I would add only to that that I would add compassion. And Thich Nhat Hanh said compassion is a verb. And that is one of the most important things to carry with you in your heart every day. Well, thank you for joining us, uh, Michelle. You summarized it. Purpose equals happiness. And a lot of good comments. Uh, keep uh, coming back to this. I'll put it on Twitter, this link, and hopefully soon everywhere else. So um, I won't be coming online for the next few days, but I'm going to California to Facebook headquarters. I'll see you from there. Uh, in the meanwhile, do pick up the book. Uh, it's uh, it's an amazing short read. And I see here you have this whole set point for happiness as well. H is equal to S plus C, C S plus C plus V. So you want to learn about the happiness uh, set point? We're not telling you. You have to read it. <laughs> okay. God bless. See you soon. And Sanjeev, thank thanks you for Deepak. having me. Love you. Yeah, love you. And Gina, thanks thank for being you here. So much. And come a little closer. Say bye to everyone. Thank you for your Before we go, asked. why are we drinking coffee, Sanjeev? You're, you're the expert on this. Co coffee is the elixir of life. <laughs> and you have a lower risk of five cancers, diabetes, cirrhosis, and you live longer. Three large scale studies published in the best peer reviewed medical journals. And all these years, coffee got a bad rap. And none of those studies are sponsored by Starbucks. Okay, <laughs> so permission for all of us to drink yes. coffee. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. bye.